parlons de ce long processus qui nous amène à nous aimer peut-être un tout petit peu plus dans nos complexités au jour le jour. Parlons d'amour. Respirons d'amour. Bonsoir et bienvenue au Self of Cabaret. Good evening and welcome to the Self of Cabaret. <applaudissements> I never meant it when I said I loved you. <laughs> or a love affair was just a sham. My method acting skills are a cinematic thrill. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Imagine ourselves. Actually, I think it's important to imagine, reimagine our place in the world and ways of being in the world. And one of the ways of being in the world that I want to reimagine is a way of being in the world where we can actually love ourselves and and do it with with truth, with honesty, with integrity. And that is self love. And that is the work that I want to be doing. So where that brought me is into this poem and then the poem kind of exists in the tension between trying to achieve control um, while also openly desiring a kind of vulnerability and uh, unknowing in chaos. There is an order. What will you do when you run through clean lines, even spoke? your bone breath, your sly teeth? Do you say it just because it sounds so chiming, all sliding with an open slit on a fine pink linen, saving up for a voice just as sure, just as silver, just as railing? First of all, it was an experience of performing to a packed room. Um, and a room that had this buzz of expectation, a buzz of familiarity. Even though I was new in the city, I walked into some, I was like, I'm walking into something really juicy. I, yeah, I, I really felt seen and I felt um, more than that. Because sometimes you can perform for an audience and you feel seen as in witnessed. But here I felt relation. And my work is surreal. It's not, it's not overtly political. It's not, um, even this work is not even very narrative necessarily. And yet I felt this relatability coming back from the audience that um, honestly, like now it's been what, a year and a half? And it's still, I still feel the ripples of that. It's incredible. And it's called The Time I Fell in Love with a Poet on YouTube. <laughs> Press, pause. How did this happen? How did late night preoccupation become head over heels insomnia? Why did his lips remind me of rose petals? What is it about them that is both fresh and dangerous, the slow cadence of an opened heart bursting forth from captivity? I'm sitting on my bed, alone watching video after video of poetry. But his poetry is everything. His words sound resonant rhythms in my fingertips. The sway of his arms make my bad knees weaker. But this is not naive love struck. I'm way past that awkward crush phase. Right? <laughs> I don't need the mystery of finding out if I'm worth something or not in the split second before I tell you I love you. Mm. Mais je, je pense que quand on fait partie euh, de communautés qui sont marginalisées, c'est difficile des fois de s'aimer. Je pense que c'est difficile des fois de reconnaître la valeur qu'on a comme intrinsèquement. Um, puis souvent, on se fait rappeler les choses qui sont difficiles dans nos vies euh, par le monde extérieur. 
Puis je trouve que le self-love qui apparaît, c'est une manière de dire qu'on existe, mais qu'on s'aime aussi. Parce que c'est plus que juste comme survivre et dans la survivance du, du, du quotidien, mais de prendre le temps de dire « wow » comme je suis une personne à part entière, je m'aime. Euh, la manière aussi dont les gens partagent leurs histoires d'amour, à, comme leur lettre d'amour à, à eux dans le passé ou dans le futur aussi, de vraiment prendre le temps de s'aimer individuellement, mais aussi collectivement, puis de, comme tu dis, des fois qui ont des liens, parce qu'on n'est voilà, on pas juste unique dans notre marginalisation, euh, mais des fois qui n'en ont pas, puis juste de prendre le temps de, de s'aimer, de célébrer cet amour-là, puis de se rappeler après que... Ben, le lendemain, ben, on s'aime encore. Puis de prendre cet amour-là, puis de le garder pour, euh, ben, pour toujours. Mais pour aussi longtemps que ça nous, qu'on en a besoin pour se sentir vraiment aimé, pleine de potentiel. Ouais. The worst thing that could happen to you will happen to you. And the best thing that could happen to you will also happen to you. And this is how you will learn. This is how you will learn to survive, to live, to thrive, to carve a space for yourself in the world. You will listen, you will learn to discern truths from lies, although I believe, child, you already know how to do this. And you will learn to protect your heart to listen to the rumbling in your guts when your body speaks. You will learn that your body has a language and your body knows that your body speaks. You will laugh. You will learn to laugh often because laughing feels good. But also, when everything else fails, laughing is all you can do. This is for all our relatives at Standing Rock. This is for our water. This is for our community. The return. To decolonize is to remember. It is a force to be reckoned with. We came from the womb and never really left it. From one womb to the next, we are all still children in a big belly that is Earth. C-sectioned into a dimension that corrupts, exploits, extracts, and pollutes. So remember our roots that reach down and down towards the core. Remember the tongue they cut for language was the first to go. They knew understanding came with a bridge, and so they burned that too. Along with the ceremonies and most nostalgically the food, a centerpiece of connection from the bountiful lands we used to sow to the table of our hearts and bellies where we recognize that pull of just how rich life can be to live fully like this. Finding wholeness is hard work, and this is the labor of our lineage. So return. To decolonize is to remember. It is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Especially Western society, we're not really encouraged or taught to practice self-love. I think a lot of self-love comes from information from the outside on what love looks like and then how that how we apply the, those tools towards ourselves and our community and the relationships around us. So they're not really informed from our own truths as like our own truths are not encouraged to actually really exist, especially as marginalized people or QPOCs uh, within uh, dominant culture. So I think Self-love is a practice and it's really it's an important tool that I think is part of self-care, that's part of that kind of larger umbrella of coming back to and returning to ourselves. Oh yeah, all right. Shout out to uh, Jean-Michel Frédéric for blessing me with these roads, they're really great. And I think the act of self-love is an act of, first of all, unlearning. For me, at least, I'm going to speak for myself. It's an act of unlearning everything that the world has taught you to internalize about yourself. Everything that the world has taught you, uh, has told you you are, actually. So, so self-love is about unlearning 
uh, unlearning all those mechanisms and then learning to find our true voices, learning to honor our own stories and learning to value them, to celebrate them, to love them. And and I don't think that self-love is work. For me, at least, self-love is not work that I did on my own. My community, the, my people, the people that I found who, who are around me and hold space for me, taught me how to love myself because they loved me before I even started loving myself. So I 